Hello, hello crafters. Welcome to today's video. My name is Shay. Before we start, grab yourself a coffee, a tea, or whatever beverage of choice. Let's have a little chat today about ways you can run your own business selling your handmade items. You don't need to have an Etsy shop, okay? And I'm saying that because Etsy can sound super intimidating and I have found great success selling things on Facebook. So the topics I'm going to be touching on in this video are three main ones. Facebook Marketplace, opening up a Facebook business page, how to do that and why it's important, and three, selling items in Facebook groups. Now, the reason that I am sharing this today is because these have been a game changer with my Cricut business and crafting business, and I was able to turn my crafting hobby into an income. So let's chat on how you can do that on Facebook. Do you have your coffee? My husband always jokes, do you want some coffee with your creamer? Because it's not even coffee color. <laughs> now we're ready to go. The first thing I want to touch on is what I call headquarters, HQ, and that is going to be a Facebook business page. It's free to make one. It's actually really quick and easy. It takes about five minutes. So I will try to show you a brief overview of mine. All you have to do is set up a little name, name your craft business, whatever it is. I make sure to include my business email in there. That way, if people prefer to email me, they have access to that. I add a little picture and then I like to upload a couple photos of my previous work. It doesn't necessarily have to be something you're selling at this time, but it's just a lot better when someone goes to your page and there's something actually there. I would also create the about section and make sure to write a little bit about your business. What do you sell? What kind of things can you offer? If you want to add prices in there, that's always an option because I know when I go to purchase something on Facebook or other places, I'm always pressing to find the prices. I don't want to have to message the people and then go back and forth and find the price out. I like to just see it right there in front of me. So definitely a great idea as well if you are looking to sell some items just on Facebook business pages. The reason that I call a Facebook business page HQ or headquarters is because this is kind of the hub that I'm going to keep referring back to in all of my posts on Facebook to drive traffic towards me. The biggest thing of this is getting yourself out there so you can get return customers and word of mouth out there. They'll tell their friends, family, and then your business is just gonna grow. So if you're just starting out, the key to this is local. Now we're going to hop on over to the next topic I wanted to touch on today, Facebook groups. Now there are Facebook groups that you could sell your items in that are like handmade and homemade crafting items. And to give you an example, the one that I live in would say, handmade in Toronto. And then you can go on there and find all of these handmade sellers and people purchasing things or people will type on there, I'm looking for someone who can make a wood sign for my mom's birthday and things like that. And that's a great way to find business. But an even better way that I have been able to get a lot of returning customers is actually finding a business page similar to your niche that's local. If you haven't quite chosen your niche for your business or you don't know what I'm talking about at all, I have talked about it in this video right here which I will leave up above for you but essentially what it is is choosing your kind of target audience or what you're wanting to make I'll give you an example for me my target audience for my business is mainly moms parents that type of thing I would post things in local mom groups that I'm a part of and do personalized back to school items or personalized stuffed animals and things like that and because the people in the group like those kind of things, you know, for their kids, it works great. And then they end up coming to me to purchase my items. Now let's talk about ways that you can get yourself out there because most Facebook groups will not let you just join and start willy nilly posting all of your information and business pages out there. They don't like that type of advertisement. So a great way to do it is actually doing giveaways. Now, yes, initially you would have to give away an item for free. Let's say I want to sell one of those Starbucks cold cups, an example right here of one that I've made. This cost me under $10 to make, but it made me hundreds of dollars because of a giveaway. Depending on the group that you're in and their rules within the group, you could post it and either say, like my page to enter the giveaway, make sure anytime you post anywhere, if you're allowed to, 
Make sure that you include your business page, the little name or the link. That way people can go onto there, see what other products you offer. Maybe they're not looking for a Starbucks cold cup that's in your giveaway, but they see that you also sell t-shirts or wood signs and that's what they're looking for. So it's a great way to have HQ, like I said, that little hub that people can go to and find all of the things. Because if you wrote that in a huge long post, no one's gonna read that. Make sure you are referencing your business page in any post, giveaway, groups, Facebook marketplace, which we'll touch on in a minute. That's a big one and it kind of ties it all together if you see the, the trend going on here. Continuing with the example of using a Starbucks cold cup that I made and personalized and using it in a giveaway. I would say, for example, like my business page to enter the giveaway and then like post a screenshot that you liked it. And then at the end of the day, a giveaway winner, it's a local person, they come pick it up from me or I drop it off, whatever, ship it to them, whatever you choose. And then that one free item equals exposure to all of those other people that just saw your post, whether you're allowed to post your business page in there or not, they still saw your post, they're probably interested, what do you make, which is a great reason to have your business page because I guarantee you they're gonna click on it and scroll through. And then if you're able to actually get those people to go to your business page, whether they're hopping over there to like it or just take a look at what your stuff's about, they're going to see your photos that you added. Remember I told you to add a couple photos and well, bam, I'm sure you'll get at least one customer from that. So it's a great way to get your name out there for local people in the area that might be looking for handmade items with Mother's Day coming up, that is a great one to start. Starting off with some type of event or holiday is great because people are going to be looking for handmade gifts for their moms, their grandmas, their kids, whatever it is. So that's where I started out and my business blew up. I was a beginner with a cricket. I was very overwhelmed making 50 shirts in one night for an order the next day. It blew up really quickly. So that's why I'm saying if you start for some type of event, I know Christmas already passed, but Mother's Day is coming up, Father's Day, those are great ones to start off. And don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging and trying to come up with these ideas on your own. I have videos coming out very soon on project ideas that you can make and sell for Mother's Day and Father's Day that worked out for me to make a great profit, even as a beginner with my Cricut. So far, we've talked about the importance of setting up a Facebook business page and also joining some local groups that are similar to your niche or what you're trying to sell, your target audience, to be able to get your name and your business out there. Now let's talk about Facebook Marketplace because this is a huge one and I wanted to save it for the end because I have a lot of talking points here. I definitely could make a whole separate video really going into detail, but I wanted to sum it up a little bit in this video just to dip our toes in today. I don't like to make my videos too long, so I will definitely do a part two specifically just on Facebook Marketplace. If you're interested, let me know in the comments down below if that's something you want to see. Let's get into the overview of selling your handmade items on Facebook Marketplace. My best advice is doing your research and testing the waters. I wouldn't suggest going out and purchasing a bunch of blanks for something, making it and hoping that it sells. You could do that and it might work, but it also might not and then you're out all that money. So what I would suggest is going to the shop, picking up maybe one or two of that item, making an example of it, so making a sign for example, and then posting it to sell. If it sells, great, you can go back to the shop, pick up more blanks, and then go from there as your orders come. But like I said, unless you're really gung-ho about it and don't really mind spending money, make sure you do your research first before going to buy a bunch of supplies and materials hoping that you're gonna sell them all. When you're just starting out, be careful. Test the waters, do your research. Again, we'll touch on that more in another video about Facebook Marketplace. Now with things like Facebook Marketplace, your business page, and even posting in any group or any social media, taking great product photos is huge. You don't have to be a photographer, you don't need a fancy camera, you can just use your smartphone that you have. There are a lot of great tips and tricks that you can find on the internet, places like Pinterest. I've seen some on TikTok and Instagram reels that show you great ways to take product photos that look super professional from home by yourself. Trust me, I am not very tech savvy with things like that, and if I'm able to do it, so can you. Maybe you don't have the money to go out and get photo props and things like that, 
that's okay. Good lighting, so make sure your lights are turned on, your windows are open, it's daytime, and then just try to get the best lighting. You can definitely do it just with your smartphone, not to worry. When you're listing things on Facebook Marketplace, make sure you are including relevant hashtags. In the bottom of your listing, you're able to add things. So let's say you're going to make a Starbucks cold cup, you can add personalized cups and personalized gift and things like that. Things that people would be searching for. So make sure you're utilizing the hashtags there because that's what's going to show up in the search. I would also make sure to include in your product description with your listing things like your business page. Like I said, you might not be able to link it, but you can add the name of it on there and write like go to business page for more products and things like that. You can also add in there that all of your products are fully customizable if someone wants to add a different name or something else to it. So I like to add a little blurb about that. The last part that I'm going to mention today for selling on Facebook Marketplace is making sure you're pricing your items properly. Not too expensive, but not too cheap either. Make sure you're getting paid for your work. And I do a video all about how to price your handmade item. There's actually a formula that gives you the perfect balance of getting paid for your work, your time, and your materials, and still making a profit while giving the buyer a good deal as well. So be sure to check out this video here because I tell you all about that formula, break it down for you, and we can talk about it there. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me today. If you are interested in any other Cricut content, Cricut business, and Cricut tips, please feel free to follow along, subscribe down below, and I will see you next time. Bye for now, crafters.